Chiefs Kingdom, welcome to Super Bowl week. This is going to be a special show. Lots to talk about today. Going to talk about uh, what is going on this week, the historical factors that is the leading into the Super Bowl. We're going to talk about media coverage on Tuesday, what it really could mean for the Chiefs that it will be available for the Super Bowl. And then we're going to talk a little bit about how they can attack this Eagles defense today on Locked on Chiefs. From the land of the free and the home of the Chiefs, this is the Locked On Chiefs podcast. And welcome back to another episode of Locked On Chiefs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making this your first listen. We really, really do appreciate it. Go check out another show, maybe Locked On NFL, Locked On NFL, Locked On Eagles is a really good one right now uh, to get some inside scoop on that team. Uh, lots to talk about, and Ryan is also doing the NFL Draft Show. I am Chris Clark. Uh, from Locked On Chiefs. He is Daniel Harms from RGR Football. Daniel, thank you so much for coming today. Uh, Thank you for having me. Hoping that I can fill the void that Ryan leaves. I know it's not easy for anybody to do that because he's such a well-spoken man, but uh, we'll do what we can and do our best. Yeah, well, at least I don't have to see the ginger right now, so I appreciate that. (laughs) Uh, You know, when we start looking at what this means for Kansas City, they are in their third Super Bowl after the third Super Bowl in four years. Uh, that is rarefied air when you start looking at what that means for this team, what that means for the city, what it really means for the franchise overall, and what it means for Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, coming into the Bengals week, this was a lot of, there was a lot of legacy talk. I don't know why. It didn't matter if he won that game, lost that game. This is something that quarterbacks, the teams don't typically do. They don't do this. They don't go to five days championship Wait. games. Wait a second. So it's not normal for them to go to five straight AFC. Champions? I know. It's, it's, it's kind it's of not, weird. Like that's not normal. Just assume Patrick Mahomes to win every single Super Bowl. It's not normal to happen. What's happened? What he's done since starting? Okay, second year starter. He's never not hosted an AFC Championship game. Think about that. Just just think about it. Who have you? Who do you know that's ever done that? Nobody. It's never happened before. So that's this whole. Legacy talk about if he loses this game to Joe Burrow. Another thing, quarterbacks don't play each other, guys. They don't. So let's stop the whole, this quarterback can't beat this quarterback. No, you're right. He doesn't play him, so we can't beat him anyway. So it was a whole week buildup of legacy talk. But here we are. Patrick Mahomes has defeated the Cincinnati Bengals. Okay? The Cincinnati Bengals, not Joe Burrow. And now he's in his third Super Bowl this time around, a much better offensive line than last time, at least collectively, than they had going into that game. So huge. a nice, yeah, it's going to be a huge matchup for him. He's got two weeks off to heal that ankle. He should look better than he did against the Bengals, and he looked really good against the Bengals with a high ankle sprain. But historically, what they are doing right now in Kansas City, it's unfathomable. It doesn't happen. And just to pre- just kind of appreciate What Andy Reid brought to the team first, establishing that culture, building from within, and then, you know, finding a chance, taking on that quarterback. And now they're here they are, five straight AFC Championship games, all in Arrowhead Stadium. I don't know. My entire life as a Chiefs fan, this kind of stuff, it doesn't happen to any team. So appreciate it for what it is, the historical value, as well as the right now value. It's very, very important. And I will never forget the day he was drafted. It was actually my mom's birthday. And uh, the NFL draft is again on my mom's birthday this year. So (laughs) interesting how that's going to play out. Uh, You know, six years to the day, they will have it again on April 27th. So uh, yeah, looking forward to that. But it is crazy because you you look back at what it really meant for Kansas City because Mm -hmm. they had Alex Smith. He had just gone to a Pro Bowl. He had just taken them to the playoffs. They had played very well. Yeah. And then they go and they draft, they trade up a first, another first round pick and a third round pick, and they go trade up to get Patrick Mahomes. And oh, well, look what he's done so far in his career. Two years where he's basically been MVP, because I guarantee, I'm pretty sure he's going to be MVP again this year. Yeah. Two years of over 5,000 yards passing, a year with 50 touchdowns, and his basically rookie season as a starter, mm-hmm. throwing 50 touchdowns, six in one game against the Steelers. You don't see that kind of thing happening against the NFL offense or against the NFL defenses. And then you look at everything else he's done. 
you know, look at what he's been able to do and elevate all the players around him. I'm glad you pointed out the offensive line because I think that's huge going into this game. Philadelphia has a great defensive line. They really get after the quarterback. They are they have the most sacks in the NFL this season. Uh, Kansas City's right. Well, Kansas City's actually well behind them when it comes yeah. to the number of sacks uh, that Philadelphia was able to get this year. So that's going to be a big test. But Kansas City's offensive line is a lot better than it was when they went to the Super Bowl against Tampa Bay. So you have to feel better about that. And, you know, you start looking at the injuries, and there's a lot to talk about there when you start looking at all the players that are injured. Uh, you know, MBS or MBS is going to be healthy, obviously. Uh, Justin Watson could be back this game. Uh, you look at, you know, guys like Willie Gay, who went out with an injury, Legarius Sneed, Juju Smith-Schuster, uh, you know, Kadarius Tony. all those guys could be back for this game. They're all questionable, listed on the injury report on Friday. A uh, lot still to play when we look at that. Yeah, this is uh, this whole week leading into it, we're going to get a good idea come Tuesday. At least we assume, based off of things that have happened in the past, we'll get a good idea Tuesday of who should be relatively active, ready to play. And as soon as practices start up this week, based on who's participating, who's doing drills on the sideline, you know, they were doing some of that last week. I think everyone outside of McCall Hardman, they're trending in the right direction. That's all Andy Reid likes to give us right now. That's what typically what they do. It's all that sportsmanship, games, gamesmanship, whatever you want to call it, head coach speak. They like to keep teams guessing. But I would bet the Eagles are preparing for everybody except for McCall Hardman to play in this football game because I think all of us right now kind of are. Yeah, and McColl will be a huge person to have in this game just because yeah. of what he can do vertically and horizontally. A lot like Darius Tony, both having both those guys on the field at the same time hasn't happened much this season. Just actually, I think in the AFC Championship game against yep. the Bengals, and uh, really they weren't able to see the field very much together. That's something that I really wish that would have been able to happen a little bit more. Uh, when we get back, we're going to talk about who's going to be available for media day on Tuesday and why that is such a big deal. But first, I want to tell you about our friends over at BetterHelp. This show is sponsored by Better Therapy, Better Help Therapy Online. Unfortunately, life doesn't come with a user manual. So when it's not working for you, it's normal to feel stuck. Therapists are trained to help you figure out the cause of challenging emotions and learn productive coping skills, which makes therapy the closest thing to a guided tour of the complex engine called you. BetterHelp has connected over 3 million people with licensed therapists. It's convenient, secure, and accessible anywhere, 100% online. Everyone deserves to feel their best. BetterHelp makes it easier to get started. As the world's largest therapy service, they've matched millions of people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. All the benefits of in-person therapy, plus it's more convenient, more accessible, and more affordable. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Get unstuck with BetterHelp. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash locked on. That's betterhelp, H E L P.com slash locked on. And I also want to tell you about one of our newest sponsors that I've really enjoyed. Uh, go check out FanDuel. This year, the only app you need for your Super Bowl party is FanDuel, America's number one sports book. We're really excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On because they're the number one sports book in America, FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. Download the FanDuel app right now so you can bet Super Bowl 57 with a no-sweat first bet. You'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. FanDuel lets you bet on everything from the money line to point spreads or who will score a touchdown. Maybe you want to go bet on how many uh, or who's going to throw the first touchdown or who's going to catch the first touchdown or if there's going to be a rushing touchdown or who – could catch a touchdown throughout the game. Lots of different things you can go bet on at FanDuel. Go check them out. The FanDuel Sportsbook app is safe, secure, and super easy to use. Best of all, you can get paid with your winnings instantly. So join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. All right. So we get into this game and what this is going to mean, and you start looking at who they're planning on having the media availability for on Tuesday. And I find it really interesting because a couple of the guys that were on the injury report are showing up for media day. That, to me, says they feel pretty good about their chances of playing in this game. So for media day, you're going to have Andy Reid, 
Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, Chris Jones, Frank Clark, Orlando Brown, Juju Smith-Schuster, Isaiah Pacheco, Isaiah Pacheco, Nick Bolton, Lajarius Sneen, Jarek McKinnon. So just about all of your captains outside of Tommy Townsend. But Juju and Lajarius are big additions there because both of those guys are technically injured, and it looks like they expect both of them to play. Yeah, we go historically through pressers and getting guys in front of the camera before a game that are quote unquote injured, that's usually a good sign that they're going to play that week. And, and that's what we've seen, you know, specifically from Andy Reid teams in the past couple of seasons. We've seen it going into the, you know, the first game of the season a couple of times uh, during a bye week, stuff like that. So it's nice to see Juju, Juju Schmidt Schuster and Legereus Sneed getting some airtime because they both deserve it. I know Juju's kind of been up and down since his concussion and multiple injuries since then but i'm hoping you know he can get healthy for this football game chiefs will need him much more than they needed him necessarily against the bengals i don't expect that mvs will be able to carry the load not that he can't he definitely could he seems to be a big game player uh he's got 200 uh, yard career performances in championship games so maybe he just shows up in the big moments it'd be nice to see him do that again but you still need your relative wide receiver core in this game you talked about possibly you know Kadarius Tony being ready to go like I said I, I talked a little bit about all these guys trending in the right direction is what we expect but Juju and Legereus Need are both going to be pretty big components I know that the young guys all three of those young players, you know, we should call them rookies. They're not rookies anymore. Once you hit the postseason, really, you know, that rookie season's over. It's time to lock in and become, you know, your second year, quote unquote, type players. They all played well against the Bengals, but having Snead in this game is going to be huge. So the fact that they're both going to be available for the media to talk on Tuesday, it's a pretty big, pretty big thing for them. Yeah, you talk about luxurious need. I think that's a big – if they can get him back, that's huge for them. I think that they're in a good position defensively to really attack what the Eagles do. And I think one of the guys that's going to have the biggest impact or could have the biggest impact is Nick Bolton. Mm -hmm. But what you were saying about the young guys, I think we need to point out as well, all three of those corners stepped up and played. And they stepped up and played against – and I'll just say it. I think the Cincinnati Bengals had the best one-two punch in the NFL. T. Higgins and Jamar Chase are – he are, are fantastic wide receivers and I think they're better than AJ Brown and Devontae Smith combined. Uh, now that said, AJ Brown and Devontae Smith are very good wide receivers. So, <laughs> uh, you know, AJ Brown is, is an animal all of himself. And I think that that's going to be a key in this game is you have all these rookies that are playing back there. You know, you look at Jalen Watson uh, getting an interception last game, uh, two interceptions in the postseason, mm -hmm. uh, huge, huge playmaker for Kansas city right now. You look at, you know, Joshua Williams getting an interception, and who's the guy that tipped it to him? But Brian Cook. <laughs> and Cook tipped it to him on the exact same route. T. Higgins was running the exact same route that Jamar Chase ran earlier and beat Cook. Cook learned, adjusted, made the play against T. Higgins, and it goes the other direction. Huge interception late in the game. Yeah, these young guys stepped up when they needed to. They had no, uh, you know, Legereson wasn't going to play the rest of the game. They didn't have a choice. I think – before and while watching the game live, I thought you know Trent McDuffie didn't have his best game, but you know, you go back, I think Tyler Boyd got him a few times, and then obviously Tyler Boyd left the game. But other than that, I think he played really, really well. And then the young guys on the outside, if you look back, they didn't get beat on like normal everyday plays, they were getting beat by oh, wait, okay, we have to throw it up because I'm getting pressure in my face from the Chiefs defensive line, and Joe Burrow's like, okay, I'm taking a shot to T. Higgins or I'm taking a shot to Jamar Chase, and that's when they got beat. Okay, I think I can live with that if that's going to be when you get beat every once in a while. Otherwise, I think Jamar Chase and T. Higgins were, I won't say that they were non-factors, but they didn't destroy them downfield like they did in the th first three previous matchups. I would say more of the first two than the last one. They just couldn't tackle in the first uh, matchup between the Bengals this season. But this was a completely different feel the Chiefs tackled in this game. Trent McDuffie had multiple times where he came downhill and tackled Jamar Chase one-on-one -on -one in open field. One-on-one -on -one with Jamar Chase. That's not easy to do. And he did a really good job there. You saw Josh Williams come in a couple times on some screens. They were getting after it. And that is the attitude and the mentality that I love from these young players that's going to be able to hold through 
and impact this game against the Eagles. So I, I love what they're doing right now, and they should definitely be recognized for what they've been able to do and had to overcome this season, especially with so many rookies playing in this defense. Yeah, and one of the, when you were talking about just throwing it up with T. Higgins and Jamar Chase, yeah. that reminds me of a meme that Joe Burrow had a couple of years ago. Oh, screw it. Jamar Chase is down there somewhere. Uh, that's kind of how I felt on that T. Higgins yeah. touchdown, that touchdown throw. I thought, yeah, Higgins is down there somewhere. I'll just throw it up and see if he can go get it. Exactly. And, and Watson had a great – I mean, he was in position. He couldn't get his head around early enough, or maybe he could have played on the ball. But regardless, they were – fighting every single snap mm -hmm. that is so huge for those rookies and i'm really glad you also pointed out trim mcduffie did a fantastic job coming downhill and tackling jamar chase that never happens one-on-one -on -one yeah. against jamar chase he usually makes at least one person miss mcduffie was able to do get it done get him down one-on-one -on -one. those guys were really locked on in that game and that was so huge you start looking at what it's going to be this time around now you're just starting to look at the eagles the Eagles like to run the ball. That is going to be a huge thing for Nick Bolton. And one of the things I liked the, about Bolton against the Bengals is what you watch Steve Spagnuolo do, at least it seemed like one or two times a drive, Nick Bolton would come down and it would look like he'd be head up on the center. He may be a couple yards off the ball, but it looked like he was possibly going to blitz. It made them look at Nick Bolton like he was going to blitz. It made them change the line coverages and who was going to get who. It gave your guys one-on-one -on -one and that really hurt the Bengals' ability to come back because then they had to start keeping more guys in to block. And when you only have three guys going out in routes, it's a lot easier to cover. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned that. When you watch Nick Bolton play, we know the big weakness that he has is in coverage. But when you mug him up like that, you do two things at once. You force an offensive line to respect that, which, like you said, creates one-on-one -on -one matchups. But it makes his job in coverage easier. He has less ground to cover. He doesn't have to come down from his spot. To go to a running back on left side, he can just go down the line. So if that ball comes out, boom, that's where he's there. He can make a tackle. So it, it makes his job as a one-on-one -on -one defender against a running back easier than having to create to clear so much space. So I, I, I'm expecting the Chiefs to do that, maybe a little bit of different technique because you don't want to do the same thing over and over again against a really good offensive coach. And Nick Sirianni, they'll have different answers for that and ways to attack it. But, excuse me, but that was a really nice counter to allow Nick Bolton to limit his liability problem in the, in coverage so i'd like to see that but he's going to be such a big impactful player because when the eagles are running hot and they're doing everything in this in their offense and they're doing making it look easy it starts with the run game they build the quarterback run game and the play action pass game off of their best offensive line football getting guys moving and just creating you know five six seven yards before all three of the running backs are, t are contacted before they even see contact. So him coming downhill, getting in the backfield, possibly getting a, a couple TFLs in this game, it's going to be hugely important for him to be able to identify and trigger downhill quickly. That's going to be a very, very tough task responsibility-wise because you don't want to get beat over the top uh, with, with play-action pass. So early, get down, get some TFLs, get more comfortable. Maybe the Chiefs offense can help out a little bit with some points here and there to get you a lead so you can take some more chances on, on what you're seeing. But uh, getting this run game stopped for the Eagles and putting more on Jalen Hurts' plate is the best way to win this football game. Yeah, and I'm glad you say it that way because I completely agree with you. I do think that if you put this game on Jalen Hurts and Kansas City gets up two scores early, uh, and maybe even in, finds a way to maybe push it out to three scores. I, I That would be impressive against this Eagles defense. But I think if Kansas City can find a way to stop the run, and I almost wonder if what you're going to see is Kansas City using Chanel a lot more than you've seen him throughout this yeah. season because they're going to need to be in their base. They're going to need to try to stop the run more. So it'll be interesting to see if he's able to play. And that would just be another rookie. Mm -hmm. that would be able to step in and, and possibly <laughs> the biggest game uh, or, you know, and obviously the biggest game of his career. And you're sitting here with all these rookies on defense, just playing huge, huge snaps and being successful. I think that that shows that beach has done a fantastic job drafting talent to this defense. And when we get back, we need to start and flip it over and start talking about the offense a little bit, what they can do against this Eagles defense to try to take them out of what they like doing. But I want to tell you about our friends over at Blue Nile. Valentine's Day is coming up, which means romance is in the air more than usual. 
I don't need to tell you all you lovebirds that you've probably had your date plans on the calendar for weeks, but have you found the perfect Valentine's Day, gay day gift yet? Whether you're celebrating this day of romance or whether you're ready to pop the question, you can find jewelry as unique as she is with the modern convenience of online shopping at BlueNile.com. At BlueNile.com, you can find the perfect piece of jewelry for life's special moments or even create the custom engagement ring of her dreams. Their simple online tools let you choose the diamond shape, size, and clarity as well as the setting style. Blue Nile's bench jewelers will then handcraft that perfect piece to your specifications. Blue Nile provides expert guidance, in-depth educational materials, and unique online tools that place you in control so you can forget the usual hassles of jewelry shopping process and focus on the romance. Every order is insured and arrives quickly in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. Shipping is free and so are returns. Right now, you can save up to 50% at BlueNile.com. That's BlueNile.com for up to... 50% 50% off BlueNile.com. All right. So one of the biggest things Kansas City can do in this game, and this is something that they actually really took advantage of and, and did things that I wasn't expecting against the Bengals. And they got a lot of yak from a guy that really wasn't getting that much yak early in the season. Yeah. Marquez Valdez Scantling saved his best for the AFC Championship game, his best game of the season, not only attacking downfield, actually running really nice routes to get open, and they used him in the short, quick passing game. They didn't have a choice either. They, they didn't have a choice. They were down receivers. He's their fastest guy with McCole Hardman out, and obviously Kadarius Tony out as well. They used him on some orbit motions. They got him the ball in space. The fumble that Patrick had was supposed to be a quick pass to Marquez Valdez-Scantling, and that's something that we haven't seen a ton from him, not even to his time at Green Bay. He was really more of a deep threat guy. I would like to see the Chiefs use him in that regard more in this game because not only are you going to have to get as much as you got out of him in the AFC Championship game to win this football game, he is, at least, I mean, from everything I've seen this season, he has another prove-it game. The Chiefs do have an out in this contract after this season, and it would be not only beneficial to him, uh, monetarily-wise, to continue to stay in Kansas City by having another really nice game in, in the Super Bowl, but you want to keep playing with Patrick Mahomes. Like he's, he elevates guys. And I think that he helped elevate MVS as much as he, you know, elevated his own play in that game. But that, that one quick pass that he took for like 15, 20 yards, that was more, that was smoother than I've seen him look in open field ever, probably maybe ever. Uh, Cause I watched him at, you know, in, in green Bay, I scouted him when he was coming out and coming over to Kansas City, he just didn't move like that. So maybe he just saved it best for last. And that's something that the Chiefs can use to exploit, even with hopefully some of their other receivers coming back. You get him in, into some space with that speed. He's still a, a sub 4-4 four, four guy. He can hit a hole in a, a wide receiver screen or an open space and get you 10 to 15 yards. And I would love to see them continue to attack that way with MBS. Yeah, and what you talk about with the orbital to motion, I really wonder if they try to get him in a couple more of those. I know he's a little stiff, and that does, that's not really his skill set. But the problem is, is you're not going to have McCall Hardman in this game more than likely. You're going to have Kadarius Tony. It sounds like he's turning mm-hmm. in that right direction, and he can do the orbital motion stuff, and that's good for him. But you also want to limit the snaps that he's going to be able to do uh, because you want him to be impactful. Mm -hmm. as much as you possibly can so you know can you use another guy in there to do that same type of thing sky Moore's not really built to do that he doesn't i mean he's a good receiver but that's not his game his game is you know doing he's a possession type receiver he can do things in the middle of the field which is another place where kansas city really should be able to attack this eagles defense you start looking at guys like travis kelsey obviously is going to be a hard matchup problem against the eagles because he's a hard matchup problem against any team But then you start adding in all the other pieces that are out there as well. Juju can go into those intermediate zones in the middle of the field that can really help Kansas City. Noah Gray can. Jody Fortson can. You know, you have all these different guys that have the ability, and they haven't really used Sky Moore in that that frame so far. But it's another thing that he can add as well. Yeah, they want to. They really should look to get Sky Moore more involved, and that's not just because. He's a rookie and a young player and a guy who's going to be an important part of their offense, a second round pick, but because he's not, you know, he's not the shiftiest guy in the world, but the Eagles haven't tackled very well this season. That's one thing that they need to look to exploit 
And one guy who can make that happen is Sky Moore. He's done a very good job of not just making guys miss, but breaking tackles when given the opportunity this season. So if you're going to be hampering with Juju Smith-Schuster and taking you know reps from Kadarius Tony to keep him healthy, Sky Moore offers a little slant option over the middle of the field, wide receiver screen ability. Even we've seen him being used on orbit motions. We've seen him being used in jet motions, get him in space and allow him to break a tackle here and there because he's still probably more of a four five with pads on kind of player. He can still do some, some speed things after the catch, but his most impactful way in this game would be to get him in space to allow him to break some tackles. And the Eagles, like I said, have not been very good at tackling Travis Kelsey, should be able to do a little bit of that too. If you guys, I don't know if you heard of him. There's this <laughs> Hall of Fame tight end over the middle of the field against some of their younger um, linebackers that they got in Philadelphia. And when you don't tackle well against Travis Kelsey, I mean, 10 to 15 can turn to 20, 30 real quick. So I think that could be a lot of fun. It's not only just the 10 to 15 with Travis Kelsey. It's the yeah. it's the volume of the 10 to 15. Like you, you talk about it can turn into 20 or 30. And yes, I agree with you there. But it's also the volume. It's mm-hmm. it's the matter that he can go over the field and he can always find places in the zones. And one of the things, actually, I think it was in the New York Times, there's an article about Patrick Mahone, or about Travis Kelsey and why he's always open. And one of the things that they talked about is because Kelsey and Mahomes are on the same page, and all the other wide receivers in Kansas City are getting to this point as well, where they watch Patrick. They're running their routes, they're doing mm-hmm. what they need to do, but they're watching what their quarterback's doing because they know no matter where they are in the field, that he could always throw them the ball. And that is so huge. And Kelsey finds ways to open up to get open for Patrick. And some of the other wide receivers are starting to do that as well. Juju is a guy that early in the season didn't do that near as much, but he's come on as late, you know, trying to open up for Mahomes and, and getting into that position. The MBS did it this last game. Uh, you know, and, and Mahomes is getting back a target this game. They didn't have last one in, in Justin Watson which I'm not going to say is a huge deal, but it's big enough that he takes shots to Watson. He trusts Watson. So that's going to be something to watch. Absolutely. You know, you're talking about your new sponsor for the Locked On On Chiefs podcast in FanDuel. If you guys are looking for a a fun anytime touchdown score, it might just be Justin Watson in this game. He talked about him down the field. If, If there's one guy that gets like a two to three target stat line with one catch, for 50 yards and a touchdown, you're looking at him. It's probably Justin Watson because as I was talking about this, I forgot he was he didn't play last game. That tells you he's a guy that does typically get lost in the shuffle. And with this wide receiver group, with these tight ends, with the running backs, a lot of the attention goes elsewhere. Travis Kelsey, if you know, if to MVS, to Kadarius Tony. Justin Watson has been able to take advantage of some of that this season for big plays down the field that result in touchdowns, and that's what they can do. And I, and I really like to see, you know, not just some motioning of, of Justin Watson, but just clearing out, maybe finding a way to get him on a little wheel route up the left-hand sideline deep down the field, take some of those safeties, bring him in, just run Travis Kelsey at him. I want just run Travis Kelsey at some of these safeties, force them to come down and then hit maybe on a deep over route or you know a, a deep post down the middle of the field because that's something that this Chiefs this Chiefs team is going to look to do. I do think that they're going to want to buy their time, get the ball out quickly to slow that pass rush initially, and then try to hit them downfield. It's not going to be immediate because the pass rush will be coming after Patrick Mahomes, but I do think if you work it a little bit longer and get some of those quick passes out, you can see Justin Watson coming in and actually making a positive impact in this game like he has multiple times this season. And we haven't even started talking about guys like Jared McKinnon. Catching the ball out of the backfield, swing passes out of the backfield can be huge with Yak. He has the ability to get out in space and make people miss. Uh, And you start looking at Pacheco, the way he is able to move and the way he runs, uh, running through people, not necessarily making people miss, but running through people is Mm -hmm. generally what he's going to do. And then you start looking at other things that we haven't really even had a chance to see in months in a situation where last week Kansas City didn't even have a possession down in the red zone uh, where they really had an opportunity to do this. But, you know, you look at a guy like Jody Fortson, who is built to go and play in the red zone and do amazing things in the red zone. Uh, Goal line fades. If I was Patrick Mahomes, that's who I'd want running my goal line fade. He's the biggest guy on the field and he can jump, go throw him the ball. You got these young, you got these small corners that aren't going to be able to hang with him. 
Yeah, there's one thing. I think that he's a big, big size mismatch in this football game. And that's not to say anything bad about the Eagles defense. They're like I think number three in the NFL this season, but just behind the uh, 49ers defense. So they're really, really good. They're coached well. They play well together. Size does matter for a tight end. If you're, you know, he's going to be the biggest guy in the field with the longest wingspan. You can look to attack that a little bit. They got some really athletic guys on the outside, but I do think 13 personnel for this offense has been a bread and butter all season. Kind of an answer to what the Chiefs were looking to do without Tyree Kill. Tyree Kill brought a ton of attention and easy 10 yard gains. The Chiefs have taken that and adapted their 13 personnel offense with Noah Gray and Jody Fortson when they're healthy with Travis Kelsey to attack the middle of defenses to make the ability to really run the football against not only a Philadelphia Eagles defense who's been kind of back and forth in the run game this year. They play a lot of 3-3-5 as well. They do change up their form with defensive formations, but they play a lot of 3-3-5, which typically lends to light boxes. You come out, 13 personnel, probably not going to get a 3-3-5. You still might get a light box, and that's where you can still attack down the field. Jody Forson's size, Noah Gray's reliability, Travis Kelsey's innate ability to get open no matter what. That could be a huge factor in this football game as 13 personnel continues to pay dividends for the Kansas City Chiefs. Daniel, I really appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much. Daniel Harms from RGR Football. Really quick, before I let you go, though, I have to ask, over under one and a half for trick plays for Kansas City this on offense? Yeah, we've seen the proclivity for the Chiefs to do some trick plays in the Super Bowl already. So I'm going to go ahead and say over. I think two is where we see the Chiefs take this one. And I can't argue with that. I do think that they're going to do something that's going to be something we haven't seen this year and something that we didn't even know was in their playbook. Really looking forward to talking more about this game because there's still a ton to talk about. We're going to be back tomorrow with Seth Kaiser. So be sure to check that out. Thank you for listening today. And we will talk to you tomorrow.